Another big budget BBC Wildlife documentary has come to an end. With roughly 5 million people watching in the UK, Frozen Planet 2 follows a long line of successful, if formulaic, landmark Attenborough programmes. But the formulae for Attenborough greatness isn't just limited to the episodes that grace our screens, it is seen in the time media that is created in conjunction with the show. Most years, posters are produced, books are printed and CDs are pressed. But not all the time media created is made predictable, sometimes it can come from the left field. And I think the perfect example of this can be seen with the free Frozen Planet 2 Minecraft DLC. As both a self-proclaimed terrible amateur wildlife filmmaker and a Minecraft enthusiast, I want to look at how this, the blockiest of blue chip tie-ins, breaks the mould for documentary adjacent media. To understand the Frozen Planet 2 Minecraft crossover, we first have to understand the purpose of documentary tie-ins. It would be easy to assume that there are two distinct categories of adjacent media, those which the primary function is to educate and those to entertain. The CD for Blue Planet 2 soundtrack, for example, is clearly for entertainment. The book, on the other hand, is informative. Sure, the pictures are beautiful and, let's admit it, most people using these as coffee table books, but, well, there are words, and primarily... Okay, so maybe the idea of education versus entertainment is too binary. A false dichotomy, if you will. To be honest, I think it's even an oversimplification to say that there is a nice, simple scale with educational on one hand and entertaining on the other. Maybe then it would be best to think of these things as two axes on a chart, entertainment value on one axis, educational on the other. Using this chart, we can see that yes, media can be both educational and entertaining. I think that this is difficult. It takes real skill to excel at both. This is especially true for video games, which have a perhaps unfair reputation for being entertaining only. A good example of this can be found with Red Dead Redemption 2, an open world spaghetti western game which features around 200 species of wildlife. I wouldn't call the focus of Red Dead its wild animals, more like robbing trains and harassing random bystanders, usual outlaw stuff. But that doesn't mean that players can't learn about the nature around them. One survey in 2021 found that Red Dead players were, on average, more able to identify specific North American species than non-players, which is especially true for those who played online as the naturalist role. I wouldn't recommend Red Dead Redemption 2 specifically for its educational value, especially not for kids, as it's an 18 for good reason, but it is still important to highlight that video games can help teach people about the world around them. For those who are uninitiated, Minecraft is a hugely popular 2009 open world sandbox video game. Whilst Red Dead is aimed at adults, Minecraft's brand has a distinct skew towards kids, although the game itself is still enjoyed by every age group. To say hugely popular is, if anything, an understatement, having around 140 million active players on Bedrock Edition alone as of 2021, Bedrock Edition being the version of Minecraft which is relevant to this video. In the base game, you can manipulate the world in almost any way you please, from building skyscrapers to blowing up the world of TNT. On top of this, there is the marketplace, where people can pay for pre-made extra content with mine coins. Sorry, I mean real money. This is where we can find the Frozen Planet 2 crossover content under the educational tab, for free, thankfully. Here we have five worlds, one for each of the first five episodes of Frozen Planet 2. Whilst Minecraft is usually a game built on the philosophy of infinite possibilities, it is important to note that these five worlds are highly curated. Let me be clear, if you download this content, you will not have golden eagles flying around your standard survival world. Perhaps then, the best way to think of this is that Minecraft is a platform on which these experiences are built upon. The Frozen Planet 2 worlds are the complete package, made up of three distinct gameplay elements, cinematic cutscenes, animal roleplay and researcher roleplay. To understand what each element brings, we first must have a look at them separately. The cutscenes have the least to talk about. Here we are treated with sweeping shots of blocky landscapes, accompanied by an equally sweeping score, as well as Attenborough's narration from the show. Every continent on Earth has such high snow fields. I think the best comparison here is with the preamble that starts off most sequences in nature documentaries. And each has its own community of animals that have adapted in their own way 
to the crushing conditions that come with the cold. Functionally, they do the same thing, creating context for the audience, or in this case, players. Where in the world are we? When in the year? What species is this? Whilst it's definitely well done, showing off the incredible worlds and models specifically made for this crossover, it is by far the least interesting thing to talk about. Next, we have Animal Roleplay, eight distinct mini-games, each depicting a sequence from the show. We play from the perspective of the animals, which sometimes shifts how the audience interacts with what's on screen. One good example of this is with the orca wave-washing hunt from episode 1. As presented on TV, this is a dramatic scene where a pod of killer whales hunt seals by tipping them off ice. With a mixture of mostly shots above the ice and a score which creates an atmosphere of anxiety, it is not unreasonable to draw parallels with those cliché shark horror films. In contrast, in the Minecraft version we control the orcas, leading to a distinct lack of tension. By adapting the sequence into Minecraft, the way we perceive the behaviour has changed. I think this is an improvement educationally, because we lose the implied meaning of orca scary created by the cinematic language used on TV. By focusing on acting out the behaviour, I think it's a lot easier to learn about the behaviour. That doesn't mean the bits you play as animals are perfect, they are often quite clunky, making it difficult to play. My least favourite by far is the bee minigame. The controls are fickle, and the timer is slightly too short, creating a very unenjoyable loop of nearly beating it before getting caught on a poorly placed plant and running out of time. To add insult to injury, you have to beat this thing to progress. And I fear this could make parts of the game inaccessible to some. It feels like there's been a lack of playtesting, which is annoying because the ideas here are good, just poorly implemented. The final element is the research of roleplay. Here the player is let loose on an open world, tasked with taking photographs of animals for their journals. These notepads can help deepen the player's knowledge with information about the species they have taken pictures of. There is an invisible force field surrounding the animals, meaning that you can't get too close. From an ethical perspective, this is great. Teaching people not to get too close to wildlife is always a win. Sometimes you can't see an animal before getting randomly repelled off a cliff. To remedy this, I would suggest adding a zoom function to the camera, like the spyglass in regular Minecraft. Then you wouldn't need to get too close to the animals to get a picture of them. Once the player is done with all their researcher tasks, then they can head back to camp and talk to the non-player character. Here, they are given a short speech on how the world is changing, but people are working on it, as well as basic tips on how to reduce your environmental impact. This is kind of good, complementing the previous gameplay with text to diversify the methods of learning, but from the way it is written, it is very obvious that this tying game is meant for children. Perhaps then, it would be an idea to select whether the player is a kid or an adult, on the off chance that someone over 12 is playing and doesn't want to be patronised about climate change. Last of all, I thought it's a real shame that there's no in-game signposting. People may genuinely want to learn more about the animals they have played as, or the habitats they have seen. This is a prime opportunity for the game to give players links to online resources, such as articles written by the BBC or National Geographic, but no, the credits roll, and that's it. As I have alluded to earlier, it is clear that the Frozen Planet 2 Minecraft tie-in game is primarily aimed at children. It may not be too much of a stretch, then, to use this as a teaching resource. It is not unusual for wildlife documentaries themselves to be used in classrooms. I remember watching Planet Earth 2 in an English lesson in Africa and drama, long story. So, if the programmes are already being shown in schools, it comes as little of a surprise that the supporting media is too. The Frozen Planet 2 worlds are available to educators via Minecraft Education Edition. There are also bonus teaching resources, such as PowerPoints, animal fact sheets and student activities, all targeted for kids aged 8 to 13. Whilst I'm not a teacher, I do think this is cool, and I probably would have enjoyed these lessons when I was in primary school all those years ago. Of course, I do think that actually being outside is preferable, but that is not always possible for kids in the UK, with nearly a quarter of children going to natural places less than once a month. In my opinion, learning about the natural world through screens is still a reasonably good option, as I hope this game proves. I think that Frozen Planet 2's Minecraft map sits in a curious place for the history of wildlife documentary tie-ins. 
for a lot of Attenborough's filmography, there are accompanying CDs, DVDs and books. The Minecraft worlds then are distinctly fresh in their medium, Perhaps this is best reflected in how rough around the edges this game is. A first attempt at something great. I hope then that these maps are not the last. And I think the concept of Minecraft tie-ins could be a genuinely powerful tool in educating kids about the natural world. Mojang, BBC, it's a formula for success. Please, a Frozen Planet free version of this. Thank you.